right, I'll give it a shot here. <clears throat> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, hope you're doing well. Guys, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for the incredibly kind and cool things you said on my first uh, Ren reaction video to Hi Ren, which is up on my channel now. I am obviously late to the party on this guy. He is somebody who is obviously means a, an incredible amount to a lot of people. His, uh, I, I am just discovering him now. I am extraordinarily excited to get to meet his music and get to hear it. Um, he seems like a really cool, really unique artist. And this is the most requested second video for me to watch. The Tale of Jenny and Screech. And that is what we are going to watch today. If you like this video, if you liked my last video, hypothetically consider subscribing. Not saying you gotta. You can totally hang out and watch and listen without subscribing. No worries, no fault, no penalty. But hey, if you want to subscribe, that's helpful. If you want to come over to the Patreon, that's even more helpful. You'll get full versions of these all these videos. Enough from me. Let's watch this video. Quiet dark night in the empty street Somewhere at London City Jenny walked alone, she was dragging her feet She was heading back home to sleep Well she knew this town, she knew this floor Because she walked it about a thousand times before She wanted to escape Can you blame? Well on the very same night in a different place There was this hooded young youth by the name of James He was 14 years old and out of his brain He'd been smoking ganja with the boys James, he grew up to be a kid of the street His mates called him Screech, he was quick on his feet He was a liar, a thief, a 14 years old The devil had set his sights on his soul as Jenny walked home all alone, she felt scared Usually she was alright, but it was like there was something in the air A divine intervention telling her to beware Maybe intuition bogging her and making her so scared Sirens sounded in the distance to the beat of Jenny's feet A symphony of the night that echoes crime on London streets Jenny turns a corner, their eyes they meet Our poor girl Jenny, a boy named Screech Give me all your money, bitch, give it to me If you cooperate, then you'll soon be free I want your purse, your phone, don't fucking look at me I mean it! Bitch, are you listening to me? Jenny freezes statue like a lady shakes stalactite Fear like liquid nitrogen in the dark night She tried to find strength to move But stayed as still as a statue in high heeled shoes What the hell are you playing at? You playing games with me? I swear to fucking God I'll slice the rosy off your cheeks You think I don't mean it, girl? You don't know me? The last thing you see will be a boy called Screech reached with the sheep that the blade with the teeth that could bite through steel and slice concrete and he swung possessed with the devil in his chest and the statue she was turned to butter in her breath It was a quiet dark night in an empty street somewhere at Nanta City Jenny lay still on the cold concrete she's far out somewhere to sleep well, she knew this town, she knew this floor Cause she'd walked it about a thousand times before I guess that she escaped It's such a shame Um, that was incredible Okay, that was a lot. So obviously he's a busker. Like he comes from busking tradition. I, it's so hard like just seeing those uh, fingerless gloves. Those are so hard to play with uh, because the, the fabric on the gloves is gonna muffle the strings. Um, but he's skilled enough to get around it. I mean, just like so many juxtapositions. We start with the uh, descent. 
I can't imitate it. The Spanish kind of flamenco inspired, not literally flamenco, flamenco loyalists out there. I'm not saying he's a flamenco player. I'm saying he it is inspired by Spanish style classical guitar. Um, it's it's a, a beautiful style of guitar, very specific, often played on nylon strings. He's obviously playing a steel string here. And he has that kind of really uh, crazy mouth trumpet thing. Let me hear that again. <laughs> I'll give it a shot here. <clears throat> Oof, sorry. I mean, it, it's so easy for him and he's kind of swaying around as he does it. Like that's really hard to do. He does it so naturally, it, like kind of lulling you into this false sense of, of, of security. And it's like the tale of Jenny and Screech, it almost sounds like a love story. Like these two are gonna fall in love and then it becomes, very brutal. He loves to combine the beautiful and the brutal. Obviously he plays very differently for each part of the story. For Jenny's part, it's more softer, a little bit more specific kind of plucking pattern, gentler, right? And then when it's James, or when it's Screech, it's the uh, almost kind of power chord version of the same chords, but played rougher, faster. You can hear him muffling mo most of it, more of a kind of busk busking sound. You can tell he's like acting differently too for each part of the song. He's a little bit more wary uh, when he's Jenny and when he's Screech, he's screaming and the volume in the voice and the, uh, the melody in his voice, even when he's just speaking is very pronounced. Like he really separates the different stanzas of his music by these things. Opening, then you go into another part, and then you go into another part. You have very specific separation of parts. It's not a single languid kind of flowing thing. It's multiple parts, it's multiple chapters. I'm so excited about this artist too, because he has such a unique vision on, um, on the way songs are written, and there's clearly a lot of theatricality in it. He's acting, he's very part of the song, just in his physicality, like his posture changes. The, his gait changes, his attitude changes. It almost seems like he's trying to be quiet at the beginning and then he gets loud and boisterous when, he's become, when he becomes James. I tried to busk when I was a kid very briefly and I remember the, <laughs> I was just out there just doing like a. Just, you know, for hours, just playing different blues things. And um, after a while, the uh, store owner came out and gave me like two bucks to move up the street. It was not a good feeling. <laughs> but I, uh, I am sure, I mean, the acoustics, I, I know that he would have uh, chosen this alley for the acoustics, probably, that's my guess, um, because it sounds so clear and perfect. That, and even though it's outside, we have this really complete sounding vocal, but doesn't sound compressed, doesn't sound like forced down your ears. It sounds very naturally kind of full and it fills up that signal really, really well. I will say melodically, it reminds me a little bit um, of, um, it's probably the same chords. I wonder if it's like, na, 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 in the LBC, it's hard being Snoop Deal, double G, something like that. It's, it's different, but similar. And it's possibly just an open, homage, but then he has that kind of like uh, a reggae inspired uh, 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 resolution to the melody. So it's, it's different enough that I wouldn't call it at all like copying, but it might just be a direct homage, not sure. Uh, either way, I really like it. It was a quiet dark night on an empty street somewhere in London city. Jenny walked home, she was dragging her feet. She was heading back home to sleep, something like that. and. We get kind of a sympathetic notion of a woman at the end of a long day, but she knew this town. Maybe she feels very secure. She knows she's been here before. She wanted to escape. Can you blame? She'd walked it about a thousand times before she walked to escape. Oh, I wonder if he's saying, oh, maybe Jenny's a, well, I don't know. Let's not assume anything about Jenny. She's, at, it's, she's walking, she's by herself. She wanted to escape, can you blame? It makes, me, it makes it sound to me like maybe she's hustling. She's out on the street hustling and trying to make some money. Uh, on the very same night in a different place, there walked this hooded blonde youth by the name of James. Give me all your money, bitch, give it to me. If you cooperate, then you'll soon be free. We have this amazing stanza here. 
Jenny freezes, statue-like, a lady-shaped stalactite, fear like squid, liquid nitrogen in the dark night. She tried to find strength to move, but stayed as still as a statue in high-heeled shoes. And he slows down to enunciate this very specifically. Screech reached for the sheath of the blade with the teeth that could bite through steel and slice concrete. And he swung possessed the devil in his chest and the statue that was turned to butter in a breath. It was quiet, dark night on the empty street somewhere in London City. Jenny laid on the cold concrete. She's found somewhere to sleep. Well, she knew this town. She knew this floor because she'd walked it about a thousand times before. I guess that she escaped. It's such a shame. You know, it's like he sings in this kind of recitative style way, like, like he's in a musical. But he also comes back and he creates a chorus out of this part. And it has a totally different meaning now that she's been stabbed and left for dead on the street. And it's this horrible scene and it's terrible. But we're not glorifying the violence. It's not about somebody being a badass or, you know, there's no political agenda to it. It's just kind of a story, a horrible, brutal story. And that's what life is like sometimes. It's horrible and brutal. All right, not always, can be nice too. <laughs> Chapter two. Ooh, nylon string. Cowboys check it. Patrick man, let me in, please open the door. I think I fucked up Patrick, really fucked up man, I'm not sure. I got crazy, left this lady lying still on the floor. I think I killed her Patrick, come on man, I can't knock no more. But Screech kept on knocking till his knuckles became sore. But there's no sign of Patrick down at number 54. No refuge for our villain, for the bitter hands of fate. With something far more sinister in mind that does away. Hey babe, are you in? Now nothing really, I'm just a bit tired, listen. Can I swing around yours for a few moments? I just really miss you, babe. What the fuck do you mean you're busy? You fucking bitch! For fuck's sakes! That's a cowboy's jacket. Siren sounds approaching like a banshee in the night. The shrill cry of justice cutting like the sharpest knife But Screech was never one to run, not one to miss a fight One hand upon his blade, he turned to face the blue lights Come on then you fucking cunts, let's fucking have you then I am Screech, I'm the boss, I'm the ender of men You think that uniform you're wearing means that you own these streets? These are my fucking streets and they call me fucking Screech Richard was an officer who stood as his foot free Working London on the night shift What he didn't think he'd see Was a boy running at him like an animal possessed With no time to hesitate He fired four bullets at Screech's chest Ah oh. Story, it ends right at the start. Young Screech and poor Jenny lying one street apart. An officer shaken 
by the boy that he claimed Two bodies lay lifeless And it's such a shame It's such a shame I can't, I mean, they got such amazing sound on this, too. Like, you can hear the, like, faintest little beep in the background. Okay, so obviously, second part, nylon string. Again, we open up with the uh, Spanish-style, finger-style guitar, kind of presenting the mood for the song. And then the body of the song has... just kind of these big chords that sometimes he plays a little bit slower, sometimes he plays fast, sometimes he'll skip over them to say something. The rhythm and like the way he sings, the way he takes that phone call, even as he's in rhythm with the song he was singing, it seems again like a stage play, but it was just put in this kind of, and like a good stage play, like a, something entertaining, like something uh, uh, done really well, because it's, it's so much more performance art than it is just simply a song right, or a video. Like when his, his, his breath is all over the place when he picks up the phone and he calls and, and he flips out and he like starts all nice, you know, like when somebody calls and needs something from you. And then they flip out when they say you can't, they, they're not gonna do it. And I'm sorry to get distracted by the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys jacket, which I think it is, I could be totally wrong. It could be some similar style um, uh, non-Dallas Cowboys jacket. Nothing against the Dallas, I can't even say that. Many things against the Dallas Cowboys. Nothing against their fans. Love you guys, the fans. We're not going to get derailed into a Dallas Cowboys thing. <laughs> but yeah, in this one, he kind of, again, we have the juxtaposition, but it's between his narrative, like he's just talking to us, telling the story, and then from the voice of Screech as he freaks out because he just like killed this person. And so we get this notion of these two people who are like dying at the same time rather than two people falling in love. It's dark, it's sad, it's very confrontational. Like sometimes he's singing directly at you, sometimes he's singing off into the night, sometimes he turns away from you. I think the choreography of this is extraordinarily specific. You could tell when he backed up immediately and like the camera guy backed up immediately and when he did the you know, shotgun sounding or gun sounding guitar thing, which reminds me a little bit, uh, it doesn't, again, like it's an homage. I'm not saying he's copying, but it reminds me, and it's, it's, it's an homage to Machine Gun by Jimi Hendrix. There is that pattern. If you've ever heard gunshots off in a distance, you can tell sometimes it's fireworks, sometimes it's a car backfiring, but there is that kind of human pattern rhythm to it, deliberate sounding not necessarily kind of naturally rhythmic or like some natural occurring sound. This is somebody doing this. Has that sound that uh, goes off in the night. I remember years ago, the scariest thing was hearing a ricochet. I heard a gunshot and then I heard a ricochet nearby. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And it seems like he just takes lessons from different things. He'll take lessons from theater, he'll take lessons from opera, he'll take lessons from blues. He'll take lessons from flamenco. He'll take lessons from his life. It's like all these things kind of converging into one performance, uh, one style of performance, and um, incredible. Part three. Hospital.
city, far from pretty. Two zero zero five. A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive. Rhythmic beeps and blood stains. She's our lady. She's tired and frail To set the scene We must rewind The hands of time For Violet's tale Silent girl grew up with violent starts Her mother was a drinker and her father was a bastard Every night he took a tie but never left the room I'll spare you with the things he did, I'm sure her mother knew Violet was a silent girl, she moved out at 16 A semi-detached council flat, paid for by a welfare scheme Packing shelves at Tesco, stacking jars like pickled bricks She met a boy named Stevie and he was a little prick Violet was a silent girl and Violet she fell fast See Stevie was a wrong and but he sure knew how to charm her Every night he took her tie but never left the room History repeats itself, he paint her black and blue and dark she never stood a chance The devil comes to dance Violet, why are you always so quiet? On her bedroom door and he's tirade He's been drinking and smoking, he's up late And he stands by her bedside, she shakes But her eyes stay shut You fucking slut, I know you're up And he pinches her eyelids and folds them up Violet, why are you lying to me, Violet? She stays silent, things turn violent. That's the sound of his fists when they fall like a crashing pilot. Hit like hailstones, one to the collarbone, full force, full blown, blood black bone, crack, knick knack, paddy whack, one to the jaw and the tooth spat, detached, fist connects and disconnects a bone. A quick deflect to misdirect the blow, but nonetheless his punches met her throat. Such a mess he's left the bruised and broke. Violet, why are you always so silent, Violet? Why are you such a little liar, Violet? Do you think I want to do this, Violet? In character, she stays silent. Well, say something, Violet! Silence. Fucking say something, Violet! Silence. Wait. Say something, Violet. Not one word. She stays quiet. London city, far from pretty, 2005 A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive The doctor, in a state of shock, saw something here so very wrong See Violet, she was pregnant, poor Violet she was nine months gone Turning to the doctor, Violet broke her silence And she cried, if I'm to die right here tonight Please let my baby stay alive The doctor soon regained composure Called the surgeon to come in As Violet's world turned to black The curtains closed, the lights went dim In London City, far from pretty 2005 A lady down in Paddington just lost the fight to stay alive A tragedy or a miracle It happened on these very streets Two twins aligned side by side A girl named Jenny And a boy named Screech Okay, hold on. Really lovely um, 
com composition at the end. It's amazing when he gets up, you can hear how well they got the audio. Like you can hear the sheets moving as his like arm brushes next to them. Um, and even his, the quietest whisper, the loudest yell that he's doing, all of it comes through even. It's incredibly well produced, especially for being just kind of live in this, in this place. This Violet story is incredibly violent and brutal. Father was a bastard. Every night he'd tuck her tight, but, ever, but never left the room. I'll spare you the things he did. I'm sure her mother knew. So she's in this completely unsafe world. She learned to be silent. She moved out at 16, paid for by a welfare scheme packing shelf at Tesco's. But she's finding another guy just like her father, who treats her just as awful because that's what she's used to. And he does all this awful stuff to her, but she stays completely quiet. And he's, he's presenting both the crazy, overwhelming anger, this indignant, selfish, um, uh, um, entitled, hateful little boy that's abusing this girl because he can't confront his own demons about himself. She's learned to be quiet. It's this horrible kind of dance they both know how to do from like earlier in their life. I love the, the description of the fight. She blocks one, but it doesn't matter. The kind of awful nature of it is so kind of lived in. So Violet dies in order for her child to live on. Happened on the very streets, two twins are lying side by side, a girl named Jenny and a boy named Screech. So I guess v Violet is just a, another person. Maybe we're just comparing all these things happened on these streets. It's so interesting because we're talking about life and death, people being victims of their circumstances, of how they grew up dying maybe in the same place at the same time. All right, so here we are on Reddit. The question, what do y'all think of Violet's tale? I really liked it, although I enjoyed the take. I think he means tale of Jenny and Screech Moore. Can someone please tell me what I'm missing from the story besides how good it sounds and is composed? Is there a real story connected or some punchline going over my head? That's how I feel like, is there something I don't understand? I am in love with the song. It was a random find on Spotify, and now I listen to Ren every day, in love with his lyrics and watching him sing his voice and what we can do with it and what he can do with it is pretty amazing. He has some real talent and I'm pretty in love with him actually, LOL. Jenny's tale is dark and so beautiful. I love the story, then line, it started really creative. Man, fuck Stevie. It's, it's interesting just putting these stories side by side these tragic, horrible stories. I don't understand it fully. Part of what I love, I mean, one of the great things about good stories is it do, they don't tell you everything. They let you do some thinking on your own. They let you do some problem solving on your own, figuring out what they mean. I don't totally understand the connection between Violet, Jenny, and Screech, but it's a really beautiful, brutal story. And I love the, the seamless way. It just seems like he's wandering around this like empty house hospital and just playing and kind of thinking to himself, but it just seems off the cuff. It just seems like he's a, a character in a, in like a Dickens play almost to just kind of reciting the mood and the melody of the, the streets around him and kind of acting as like it's troubadour. Like he was kind of birthed out of the streets. Also the biggest thing, which I couldn't believe I, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, but I'll mention it now for the people who stayed till the end. Um, Ren's copyright team or Ren or whoever does it is allowing me to keep the revenue on my previous, uh, they released the copyright claim to my previous um, reaction, which is incredibly cool. And Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, Harry Styles, Adele, uh, I mean, uh, 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 NPR, everybody else claims my stuff. Ren's team or whoever does it it's very, very cool and has allowed me to keep the revenue from that. And from that, I just want to say thank you to them or to the lawyer or to whoever it was that did it. What is the next uh, RAN video you'd like me to react to? Please let me know in the comments. This was incredible. I'm really excited about him as an artist. I love the idea of him inspire. I love the idea of like the narrative music video. It's very, uh, it, like, I don't want people to copy him, but it, it, it could really be a direction for people to go if they feel tired with the more kind of standard setup for a lot of videos that you see, which is like the song and then like five different setups and five different scenes and they all combine at the end. I love how thoughtful and complete this idea was and really amazed. Incredible. Until next time. Keep playing.